Everyday Math Learners. For this video, we will be talking on the mean of sampling distribution of means, variance and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means, and sampling distribution of the sample mean for normal population when the variance is known. Let us have this mean of sampling distribution of means first. For example, number 1, consider a population consisting of the values 24, 12, and 9. So let us compute for the population mean and the mean of the sampling distribution of means. So here are the solutions. First, the population mean is equal to the sum of all the elements in the population over the total number of elements in the population. And then, uh, we are going to substitute all the elements in the population and add them over the total number of elements in the population which is 3. And the answer is equal to 15. After getting the population mean, now we will get the mean of the sampling distributions of mean. Since we used the example on sampling distribution last week, so we assume that we have this table as our sampling distribution. So, the formula is mean of the sample means is equal to the sum of sample means over the total number of sample means. Add all the values of the sample mean, which are this. Then divided by 6 as the number of sample means. So, the answer would be 15. Take note of the difference between population mean and the mean of the sample means. Notice that the population mean and the mean of the sample means are equal. Therefore, the population mean is equal to the mean of the sample means at all times. We have known the concept of the equality of the population mean and the mean of sample means, so let us try to apply it in these examples. If the mean of the sampling distribution of means is 12.21, what is the population mean of this data set? The answer is 12.21. If the population mean of a data set is 2.33, what is the mean of the sampling distribution of means? So the answer is still 2.33 because that is the concept of the equality of the population mean and the mean of sample means. For example, a population consists of the values 2, 4, 7. List down all the possible samples of size n is equal to 2 without replacement. Meaning to say, from the population having 3 values which are 2, 4, and 7, we will just take 2 values as our sample size. That can be drawn from this population and compute for the mean of the sampling distributions of mean. So here are the solutions. To compute for the mean of the sampling distribution of means, we need to construct the sampling distribution of this problem, following the steps we learned last week. Since our problem says without replacement, we will be using the fundamental counting principle to know the total number of samples. So the solution is, 3 times 2 is equal to 6. 3 here is our first factor because the population consists 3 values. And the second factor is 2 because of the words without replacement. Meaning we are not allowed to come up to pairs of the same kind. Example 2 and 2, 4 and 4, 7 and 7. So we will not count them in. There are two factors, which are 3 and 2, to be considered in our solution because that describes the number of sample size, which is n is equal to 2. So we have 6 possible observations all in all. 
Since we are asked to construct the sampling distribution, here is the first step. We are going to make a table. First is to label the first column with the number of observations. As we have computed earlier using the fundamental principle of counting, we come up 6 possible observations. So we put numbers from 1 to 6 in the first column. And for the second column, we will label it with the values of sample taken two at a time or per observation. So the values can be 2 and 4, 2 and 7, 4 and 2, 4 and 7, 7 and 2, and 7 and 4. Again, we don't include two numbers with the same kind. All the possible sample of size n is equal to 2 without replacement are listed on the second column. For step 2, add one column to the right of the sample. This third column will be for the mean of the sample. To get the sample mean, consider the observation 1, add the sample. So we have 2 plus 4 and that is equal to 6. Divide it by 2 and its mean is equal to 3. For observation 2, we have 2 plus 7 and that makes it 9 divided by 2 and its mean is equal to 4.5. For observation 3, add 4 and 2 and that makes it 6 divided by 2 and that makes it 3. So, follow the same step until observation 6. For observation 4, that makes it 5.5. For observation 5, that makes it 4.5. And for observation 6, that makes it 5.5. For step 3, add one more column to the right of the column of the sample mean. This fourth column is for the probability of sample mean. At this point, distribute the probabilities equally because we listed all our samples. In this given example, we have six possible observations. Therefore, the probability of each sample mean is 1 over 6. 1 in our numerator because there is only one possible outcome for 2 and 4, one possible outcome for 2 and 7, one possible outcome for 4 and 2, and so on. 6 in our denominator because, again, there are 6 possible observations all in all. So we have to put 1 over 6 in each observation as its value for the probability. Step 4, consider the last two columns which are the sample means and the probabilities of the sample means. Highlight the rows with the same sample means. So the observations 1 and 3 are having the same value of the sample mean, which is 3. The observations 2 and 5 are having the same value of the sample mean, which is 4.5. And the observations 4 and 6 are having the same value of the sample mean, which is 5.5. After highlighting the same value of sample means, the step 5 would be making a new two-column table for the sample means and the probabilities of the sample means. For the first column, list down all sample means in ascending order, from smallest to the largest number. As you have observed, we just write one entry for 3, 4.5, and 5.5 in this table. Even if we have seen two entries of those values in our first table. So we are not supposed to write more identical entries for a certain value. So we have 3, 4.5, and 5.5 as written in the first column of our new table. For the second column, list down all the probabilities of the sample means. The probability of 3 is 2 over 6 because we add the probabilities 
of observation 1 and 3. That is 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 is equal to 2 over 6 or 1 over 3 as its simplest form. The probability of 4.5 is 2 over 6 because again, we add the probabilities of observations 2 and 5. So 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6, the answer would be 2 over 6. And its simplest form is equal to 1 third. And the last one, 5.5, its probability is still 2 over 6 because again, the observations 4 and 6 are the same. So we have to add them, add the probabilities. So 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6, the answer would be 2 over 6. Or its simplest form is equal to 1 third. Please be mindful that our probabilities should be in simplest form. So, this table is what we call the sampling distribution. That a population consists of the values 2, 4, 7, with n is equal to 2. Now that we have the sampling distribution, we can compute for the mean of the sampling distribution of the means. So, using the formula of mean of the sampling distribution, which is sum of sample means over the total number of sample means. Substitute the values of the sample means in our numerator, add them, divided by 3 as the number of sample means in our table. And it is approximately equal to 4.33. Therefore, the mean of the sampling distribution of means is 4.33. So, this time, we will discuss on the variance and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means with and without replacement. Please take note class that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample means is also known as the standard error of the mean. It measures the degree of accuracy of the sample mean as an estimate of the population mean. To find the variance and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means, please follow the steps below. First is to find the population mean. Second, find the population variance. Third, find the population standard deviation. Fourth, construct a table consisting the sample means. Fifth, find the mean of the sampling distribution of means. Sixth, find the variance of the sampling distribution of means. And seventh, find the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means. For example, consider a population consisting of the values 24, 12, and 9. List down all the possible samples of size n is equal to 2 with replacement. We are asked to compute for the variance of the sampling distribution of means and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means. So we have to take the first step of finding the variance and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means, which is find the population mean. The formula to be used for finding the population mean is the sum of all the elements in the population over the total number of elements in the population. So we have to substitute the given values of the population in our numerator, which are 24, 12, and 9, add them, divided by 3 as the number of the population in our given, and it is equal to 15. Therefore, the population mean is 15. The second step is to find the population variance. So, construct a table to get the summation of the squares of the difference of the x values and the population mean. In the first column, list down the values of the population, which are 
9, 12, and 24. Get the population mean which we computed earlier and it is 15. Then in the second column, we use the expression x minus the population mean. So we have negative 6 here because 9 minus uh, 15 that is equal to negative 6. Um, 12 minus 15 that is equal to negative 3. 24 minus 15 that is equal to 9. And for the third column, we will consider this expression, square the expression x minus population mean. So we have 36 here because when we square negative 6, the answer is 36. When we square negative 3, the answer is 9. And when we square 9, it is equal to 81. To get the population variance, use this formula. Since the formula to get the population variance has an expression in our numerator, which is summation of the square of x minus the population mean, we will get the value of the summation of all values on this third column. So, 36 plus 9 plus 81, it is equal to 126. So now let's compute for the population variance using this formula. So we have to substitute the value of expression in our numerator, which is 126, divided by 3, which is the number of values of the population, and it is equal to 42. Therefore, the population variance is 42. For the third step is to find the population standard deviation. So use this formula, substitute the value of our numerator which is 126 as we computed that summation of the squares of x minus the population mean earlier divided by 3 as the number of population then it is equal to the square root of 42 and the square root of 42 is 6.48 therefore the population standard deviation is 6.48 fourth step is to construct a table consisting the sample means so we are going to make a table first is to label the first column with the number of observations by the way, this is an example of what we have done last week and we computed that there are 9 possible observations. So we put numbers from 1 to 9 here in this first column. And for the second column, we labeled it with the values of sample taken 2 at a time or per observation. So the values are 12 and 12. 12 and 24, 12 and 9, 24 and 24, 24 and 12, 24 and 9, 9 and 9, 9 and 12, 9 and 24. Next is we add another column to the right of the column of the sample. This third column will be for the mean of the sample. So to get the sample mean, take the observation 1. Consider the samples, we have 12 and 12, so we add them, 12 plus 12, that makes it 24, divided by 2, and its sample mean is equal to 12. For observation 2, its sample mean is 18. For observation 3, it is 10.5. For observation 4, it is 24. For observation 5, it is 18. For observation 6, it is 16.5. For observation 7, it is 9. For observation 8, it is 10.5. And for observation 9, it is 16.5. The fifth step is to find the mean of the sampling distribution of means. Consider this formula, which is the mean of the sample mean is equal to the summation of the sample means over 
n. So we will add all the values of the sample means in our third column. And it is equal to 135. Divided by 9 as the number of observations. And the mean of the sample means is equal to 15. For the sixth step, it is to find the variance of the sampling distribution of means. So we will add another column to the right and it has an expression of sample mean minus the mean of the sample mean. Since we get the value of the sample mean earlier and that is 15, so we will use this to get the value of the third column. So 12, which is the sample mean minus 15, which is the mean of the sample mean, it is equal to negative 3. 18 minus 15, the answer is 3. 10.5 minus 15, the answer is negative 4.5. 24 minus 15, the answer is 9. 18 minus 15, the answer is 3. 16.5 minus 15, the answer is 1.5. 9 minus 15, the answer is negative 6. 10.5 minus 15, the answer is negative 4.5. 16.5 minus 15, the answer is 1.5. After that, we will add another column for the square of the sample mean minus the mean of the sample mean. So, negative 3 squared, the answer is 9. 3 squared, the answer is 9. Negative 4.5 squared, the answer is 20.25. 9 squared, the answer is 81. 3 squared, the answer is 9. 1.5, the answer is 2.25. Negative 6 squared, that is 36. Negative 4.5 squared, that is 20.25. 1.5 squared, the answer is 2.25. And the summation of the mean minus the mean of the sample means squared is equal to 189. To compute for the variance of the sampling distribution of means, use this formula. And then substitute the value of the summation of the sample mean minus the mean of the sample mean squared, which is 189 divided by 9 as the number of observations and it is equal to 21. Therefore, the variance of the sampling distribution of the means is 21. For the seventh step, we have to find the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means. So, use this formula. Substitute the value of our numerator, which is 189, as we computed the summation of the squares of x minus the population mean earlier, divided by 9 as the number of observations. Then, it is equal to square root of 21. Square root of 21 is approximately equal to 4.58. Therefore, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means is 4.58. Take note class that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is also called the standard error of the sampling distribution of sample means. This time, we will be talking on the sampling distribution of the sample mean for normal population when the variance is known. Suppose that a random sample of size is taken from a normally distributed population with mean and variance. If this one is the sample mean, then the sampling distribution of the sample mean is a normal distribution with mean of this notation and the variance as well. For example, the scores of grade 11 students in an achievement test in mathematics are normally distributed with mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 12. Suppose that a random sample of size is equal to 20 is taken from this group of students. 
A. Find the mean and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the means. B. Find the probability that the mean score of the students in the sample is more than 85, less than 76, exactly 76, between 76 and 85. Here are the solutions. The mean of the sampling distribution is equal to 80 because this is in the given situation. To get the standard deviation, we have this formula. Substitute the variance which is 12 here and n is 20 here. So simplify them further and that is approximately equal to 2.68. Since the population scores follow a normal distribution, the sample means are also normally distrusted. Thus, the desired probabilities may be computed using the areas under the standard normal curve. We convert the values of sample mean to standard. If our sample mean is equal to 85, then this will be the formula to convert our values to standard. So we have Z is equal to the sample mean minus the mean of the sample means divided by the standard deviation. So substitute the values which are 85 as the sample mean minus 80 as the mean of the sample mean divided by 2.68 as the standard deviation and it is approximately equal to 1.87. Since we are looking for the probability of the scores to be more than 85, so we have P of Z is greater than 1.87. Using the table under the normal curve, we have to locate 1.8 in our first column and 0 0.07 in our first row. So we have 1.8 here and 0 0.07 here. We have to consider their intersection and it is 0 0.4693. In illustrating the curve, we have to locate 1.87 and it is in between of 1 and 2. That is why we have a certain line here that indicates 1.87. Meaning to say, um, from, from this line to the line here, which is considered as the mean, its probability is 0 0.4693, which is what we have uh, located in our table. Now, the blue color shade, which is here, is the probability of Z or the standard score greater than 1.87. The right side of 1.87 is shaded because of the symbol greater than. But we don't know yet the probability of the standard score greater than 1.87. So we need to solve it. In solving, we have 0 0.5 as the probability of the half of the normal curve minus 0 0.4693 as the probability of standard score 1.87 and the answer would be 0 0.0307. So we need to say the probability of this shaded color is 0 0.0307. Or the probability that the mean score of the sample to be more than 85 is 0 0.0307 or 3.07%. If the sample mean is equal to 76, then use this formula. Z is equal to the sample mean minus the mean of the sample means divided by the standard deviation. Next, substitute the values which are 76 as the sample mean minus 80 as the mean of the sample mean divided by 2.68 as the standard deviation. And it is approximately equal to negative 
1.49. So, we are looking for the probability of the scores to be less than 76. So, we have the probability of Z is less than negative 1.49. So, using the table under the normal curve, we have to locate 1.4 in the first column and 0.09 in our first row. So, our 1.4 is here and our 0.09 is here as well. And their intersection is 0.4319. Take note, class, that even if the standard score is negative value, the value of the probability or area will remain positive. So that's why we locate 1.4 and 0.09 in this table. In illustrating the curve, we have to locate negative 1.49 and it is in between of negative 1 and negative 2. Okay? And uh, this line indicates negative 1.49. The right side of our negative 1.49 until this middle, which is the mean, its probability is 0.4319, which is what we have located here in our table. The blue color shade is the probability of our standard score, which is less than negative 1.49. That is the left side of negative 1.49 because of the symbol less than. But we don't know yet the probability of the standard score less than negative 1.49. So we need to solve it. In solving, we have 0 0.5 as the probability of the half of the normal curve minus 0.4319 as the probability of the standard score negative 1.49 and the probability of standard score which is less than negative 1.49 is equal to 0.0681 so meaning to say the shaded one, its probability is 0.0681. Or, the probability that the mean of the samples to be less than 76 is 0.0681 or 6.81%. We need to find the probability to be exactly 76 and the probability of the standard score which is equal to negative 1.49 is 0.4319 or the probability that the mean of the scores is exactly 76 is 0.4319 or 43.19%. The fourth question is we need to find the probability between 76 and 85. As done previously, for sample mean which is equal to 76, its standard score is equal to negative 1.49 and its probability is equal to 0.4319. For the sample mean which is equal to 85, its standard score is equal to 1.87. And its probability is equal to 0.4693. But again, we need to find the probability between negative 1.49 and 1.87. Thus, we are looking for this notation. Formally, we read this notation as Z is greater than negative 1.49 but less than 1.87. In illustrating the curves, for negative 1.49, it is in between of negative 1 and negative 2. So this line is the indicator where negative 
1.49 is located. So from this line, going to the middle of the curve, which is considered as the mean, this one, its probability is 0 0.4319. For 1.87, it is in between of 1, which is here, and 2. So this line is the indicator where you can locate 1.87. So from this line, going to the middle of the curve, which is the mean, its probability is 0 0.46. Nine, three. So, the blue shade is considered as the area of the standard score which is equal to negative 1.49. And this pink shade is the area of the standard score which is equal to 1.87. In getting the area of the two shaded parts of the normal curve that refers to this notation, which is the probability of Z, which is greater than negative 1.49, but less than 1.87, we just simply add the probability of negative 1.49, which is 0 0.4319, and the probability of 1.87 which is 0 0.4693 and it is equal to 0 0.9012 therefore there is 0 0.9012 or 90.12 percent probability that the mean of the sample falls between 76 and 85. Thank you for listening math learners. I hope that you will answer all the activities that we have prepared for you. Keep safe and God bless always.